Yo? Yes. Yo ho, dude. How you doing? Good, man. Good. Good. That's, that's fucking good. Nice. Uh, <laughs> you ready to do some coaching? Yes. So, tell me, race and league and kind of like a uh, just a really quick summary of your overall play style with how you like to try to play the game. Um, so I play Protoss. Uh, I'm Platinum 2. I've been stuck at Platinum 2 for like a month. Uh, I only started playing maybe like uh, two months ago or something or okay. two and a half months ago. I, I was watching your videos. I don't know. I played StarCraft before and fell off and then I got really into it again. Nice. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing kind of like the macro builds and all that stuff and, and that's fun, but... um. I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm getting smashed by Terrans fucking dropping me all the time. And, uh, you know, with Zerg, I try to go sky toss and a lot of the their timings hit when I'm at my three bays. You know, I don't have enough units. And uh, PvP is OK. I'm, I'm getting in PvP. I think my main issue is um, proxy void. I don't know how to stop it. OK. Yeah. Uh, do you get proxy void a lot? Just out of curiosity? Um, I would say. 30% of the time I play a Protoss. Oh my god. <laughs> so that's quite a bit. Uh, okay. So if you, had to, if you had to pick, I mean, if we have enough time, it depends yeah. on what you want. I guess if you want some specific, like, direct counters to what you're fighting against right now, we could break down three different forms of matchups really fast to be like, okay, this is how you deal with proxy, void, PvP. This is how you deal with people who be who are aggressive in and in Terran and, again, with Terran and Zerg against Protoss. Things like yeah. that. Or we could really yeah. delve deep. It's, if you want to do that, we could do that. We, we could just like. Give what, you, what, what was the second thing you were going to say? Uh, <clears throat> we could delve like really deep into one matchup and just really like hardcore look at your build and uh, okay. give you like a really fun, like strong fundamental understanding of like what is important and what you should be trying to do to like what you should be trying to accomplish in a matchup, which takes a lot longer to talk about. Uh, what do you? Whatever you think is more constructive, you know, it's like my first coaching so session. So either I, way, I've just been going off your uh, uh, your bronze GM videos, basically. I would say either way works, and I would, I, whatever way we do, I will probably dedicate the most time. So like, let's say we went to the three version, like all three matchups, I'll probably still dedicate the most time into your first game because I'll try to make sure your build is not like fucking falling apart. Because if your build's falling apart, everything's gonna fall apart. And it doesn't have to be as simple as like a build order. It could be like the concept of how you understand how to create a build uh, for yourself. Because okay. like if that's out of order, then it will always be out of order, and it will just cause problems for you. So, okay. I, I guess let's just, let's do this. Let's start this way. We'll see how we go with time. Give me yeah, the matchup you want to improve on the most. So I, if you feel good in PvP, I'd say probably don't do PvP. Uh, I feel okay in PvP. Oh, yeah. The most upset I get is when I lose to a Terran. I don't know why. Okay. You want, <laughs> you want, look, so... <laughs> you want to look at Protoss vs. Terran then? Yeah, PvT. Yeah. Okay. So do you have any... If you don't have any, it's okay. But do you have any replays on hand that you'd oh, want to take a look at that are recent yeah. from your gameplay? Um, I, I can uh, look at some. Uh, let, me, let me pull it up. Uh... Because if you don't, what I what we could do as well is I could uh, I could either just kind of break down matchup concepts to you, or okay. I could uh, I could have you live play someone right now and I could talk about your gameplay and uh, like break it down with like you know maybe not while you're playing it exactly but talk to you afterwards and be like okay so this and this and this uh, and I could give you a well, general I, idea. No, I, I do have one and another thing uh, you know with Taryn. Yeah, I, I I got a replay here. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, you know, just. So I, how do I share it with you? Okay, so now all you gotta do is, uh, are you by chance in the vibrator group chat of Battle.net? Like it's like a group party thingy? No. Okay, so I, I'll just have you join it just cause it's super easy, okay? So are you on Battle.net right now in like the main menu area? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm on the Battle.net okay. menu. So in bottom right, where that little chat bubble is with two people inside of it, click that. Yes. It'll open up a new window, and the bottom left yes. of this window, hit Find. And now a new window again will pop up, and in top right of this window, you see a search bar with, like, you can type in text. Yeah. Type in Vibe, and just, just Vibe in that. And now a bunch of new channels will show up in the window, and you should see one with a Grandmaster badge with 600 members in it that says Vibes Raiders. Um, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> sure. 
Uh, so I, I'm in the this is like the 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 screen where I uh, open Starcraft. Right? It has like World, World of Warcraft. Oh, you're on the launcher. Sorry. Uh, so okay, yeah, so launch, launch right Starcraft. Now. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm in Starcraft now. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm okay. So now you see the chat like at the bottom right how you have like a main menu, yes. a clock. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So hit the chat bubble thingy where it, it'll open up groups and events essentially. The chat. Okay. Oh yeah, I see it. I see it. Okay. Then go to find. And then find, and then type in vibe in the search bar. Okay, vibe. And now it's a 600 member channel with a GM badge on it. it says vibes raiders. Yes, I, I got it. Okay, okay so double click uh, that. Would... Yes. And then the top right of that, you'll have a new window again. And at the top right yes. of this, hit join chat. Join chat, okay. I'm in. Okay, sick. And then your name is uh, Kyol or? Hyperion. Okay, I got you. That's pretty gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, dude, it's fucking sick. I love this name. <laughs> no, dude, dude, it's uh, it's fucking sick. You're role playing. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so just accept the party invite. Oh, 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 uh, oh, I see. Okay, yeah, got it. <laughs> okay, uh, what you said made me laugh. All right, so <laughs> go ahead and go to replays now. The replays. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh. Okay, I I think this is the one where I got fucking just crushed early. Okay. okay. Watch with others. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I, I've I've been seeing this build a lot, and I I, I think I, I know it's like. Um, oh, shit. I was I gonna do, I, I, I was gonna interrupt you. I was gonna interrupt you for a second, but I wanted to let you finish and hoped you wouldn't start it. But let's let's just remake it really fast because all I want you to do is uh, do the same thing you just did again, but when we're in the lobby, the replay, just make me the lobby host because now I can't okay. control anything. Okay, let me, let me exit right. See, this is the one. I'm, I see. I'm, I'm not entirely sure this is the one. Okay. That uh, I want, but it's either this one or that one. As long as it's a PVT, that's the main thing. And I, it might yeah, not be your PVT. best game. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure I lost it. So. Okay. <laughs> well, either even if you win a game, I can still tell you a fuckload about how you play. Yeah. Okay. All right. So make me a lobby so host here. Promote to lobby host. Okay. Perfect. All right, and uh, just in case you've never heard me say this before to anyone else, I love uh, just saying, I, I like saying this to new people because I want to make sure you feel comfortable with like asking me questions. And uh, yeah. <coughs> essentially, <clears throat> if you have a question and I'm like mid thought of a sentence that I'm trying to explain to you, I do not mind. I actually encourage you to interrupt me and ask your question if you have one, because I can always like answer your question so you don't like lose your train of thought. And I'll come back to the point I was making previously and I'll finish that point off. Uh, okay. But yeah, definitely ask me any questions you have at any point in time so you don't feel like it's being overwhelming. Okay. Uh, all right. So in general, in PBT, we'll see your opener and what you like to go for. But uh, we're talking platinum level. I think a great solid way to play platinum level PBT is to definitely uh, go along the lines of just defensive play until you can do counter massive timings. So yes. absorb defensively, then just and then once you have a lot, go kill him. Okay. Yeah, I think sometimes that's where I get <clears throat> screwed. I'm not able to macro, micro well, like defend drops and you know all that shit. And it yeah. throws me off my my build and all that. Like this right here already, I would say this yeah. is unnecessary for you, because yeah. uh, that's five probes already extra you pulled off the middle line just to kind of like poke the SCV two times. And it, well, one issue there, because I hate it when they start building a fucking, uh, you know, bunker in my, ex my um, natural. All right, check this out, though. Here's some information for you that's really important. So you built a pylon with your very first probe that I built. He, the the yes. Terran's going to do the, the exact same thing with the SCV. He's going to build a depot with his first SCV. Yes. A, now, a depot, a pylon, same build time, same mineral cost. And the same thing okay. exists for the SCV and the probe and the barracks and the gateway. So if, if you know, and then also it takes a, a barracks has to be done to even start a bunker. So see, I, I don't know that. I yeah. Know that. So for him to even build a bunker, okay, you would have to have your gateway done because you built your shit as fast as possibly could. And he's doing the same, like, if he's going to build the earliest bunker you can, his bunker or sorry, his barracks will be paced at the same time of your gateway. So you wouldn't even have to worry about the bunker until after the okay. gate's done. Got it. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> all right, and then uh, otherwise it's all G so far. 
Because, yeah, like, the, the, his barracks is, like, like if we back it up to, like, two seconds here, when we get to his base, you can see this is a big thing to yeah. look at, too. So you're like, oh, your barracks is, like, 80% or, like, 85 90%. It's almost done. Your gateway is the same thing. Your gateway is even slightly faster than his barracks by, like, a second. Mm -hmm. uh, but a big thing to note here is you should always look at this. And you uh, basically what you want to look what you want to know is if you see your opponent has a barracks there at like where it is right now but let's just say the barracks is only like one third of the way done or like yeah. it's like super far behind that would be a moment to start being like what the fuck is going on in this game something's weird you like that is not your well, first building proxy. yeah, yeah exactly. it, it could either be a proxy or he could be a, or or he could have gone for like double gas before taking a barracks which could be like a gas based all in like fast tanks and liberators and or, or whatever so things like that so okay. uh it's always important to know like when is his barracks or where like how early was it built and is it the same as yours because if it is then it's standard okay <clears throat> and scouting his gas too is pretty important so when your probe gets into his base yeah so the gas t i heard you talk about that i, I don't really understand scouting like, how do you how do you okay do so all you want all you want to do <laughs> Is uh, see how like the, your fog of war almost touched his gas on the top right of his main of his main base. Okay. Okay. So like you want to actually take a look at the gas, and okay. so one and, uh, the way it kind of goes is is the big thing you want to look at is how many gases has he already built, and that tells you a lot about his build. So if someone already has two gas before their first production building is even done, that is a very heavy tech build that is not going to have an expansion. It's going to have like a really fast tech follow up. So like if it was Protoss, I would not be surprised if that was going to be for something like Stargate or possibly yeah. uh, for like really quick DTs or some shit like that. If it was yeah. a Terran player, I wouldn't be surprised if it's for like tank timing or like something with factory with that costs a lot of gas like tanks or maybe it could be going into like Banshees or possibly even like a battle cruiser, but probably not. But mostly it would probably be for like Banshee or, uh, or tank because those can actually be more economical. Battle Cruiser is so resource consuming. It'd be like you going one base carriers essentially. Like it, it yeah. would just consume all your money and then you would never be able to expand. Uh, and okay. then for Zerg, if you saw double gas like this, it would probably be for like a really fast night assault land or some shit like that. Okay. <clears throat> it, do you have to look at the numbers? So the numbers? that's advanced. Uh, yeah. I won't go too big into detail about that right now for you because you don't really need it yet. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll just quickly throw it down here with like a quick, really rough. Uh, explanation of it gases always start at the same they start at 2250 uh so like for instance if you uh if you're looking at every, like look at the gas near your probe scout for instance like you see it's 2250 like every gas on the map is always going to have 2250 okay. and you just subtract the difference of what has happened so if you see 2150 you're like oh you've already mined 100 gas and okay. if you understand what things cost in terms of tech pretty much understand that 100 gas is about what you're going to need for every form of tech at the start of the game. So mm -hmm. if you see someone trying to go for a upgrade off of like a weapon or an armor upgrade, 100 gas is going to be weapon upgrades. And some races are 100 gas for armor upgrades and some races are a little bit more. But in general, 100 gas is roughly going to be around. For, for just basic knowledge, 100 gas is what you need for an upgrade. It's also what you for like weapons and armor. It's also what you need for an upgrade for generic... Uh, mobility. So, like, for if, if Terry got Simpack really fast, it's 100 gas. If Zerg got speed really fast, it's 100 gas. Uh, if Protoss, I, Protoss is a little different, but because Warp gets only 50 gas, but it's in general, like, you can see there's like a decent investment there. Then 100 gas kind of like allows you to get that. 100 gas also is a realistic number to take a lot of your tech. So, Factory is tier 2 for Terran, 100 gas. Layer is 100 gas for Zerg, that's tier 2. Uh, Council is tier two for part and also robo is tier two tech for different branches of what Protoss can do hunter gas for each of those okay. so the hunter gas is pretty indicative of like a lot of things in this game that could be tech based or upgrade based and you can tell what they're going to be based off of what building you see so if you see oh you mined a hunter gas already and there's your factory well now i already know what you're doing with it cool um and then if you see a player going for multiple gas so let's say hypothetically you saw <clears throat> a terror player that had two gases done already, and you were like, okay, you've mined 100 gas on one of them and 50 gas on the other, but both gases are still mining with three SCVs. And you, there's your factory, but you're still mining with three SCVs on each gas. That is the kind of player that's going to all in the shit out of you with something tech-based, because he's not going to stop spinning gas. 
He's not just going mm -hmm. factory to make like Hellions, for instance, which don't cost any gas, which is only pure mineral. He's going factory to make things like tanks or Thors, or he's going to go straight to the starport and make like Banshees or whatever, because he's going crazy on gas. Long story short, the more gas someone invests oh, into their yeah. build, the more likely they're teching harder against you. And if there's the okay. faster they tech, the more likely they're going to own you. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, yo, thank oh, you, Doc Holiday, for the yeah, sub, dude. I don't remember where Hell yeah. Five good subs. All right, so your build is a little out of order as well. This is the only yes. thing that matters, too. Uh, so, like, build for the whole game is not super, super relevant to be like, well, it has to be perfect all the way till oh, nine minutes. Yeah. You can have a little bit of deviation as long as you're maintaining production, then you're good to go. But for the start of the game, you really want to make sure your build order goes like this. I'll, I'll write it down as well. So you go... Pylon first, <coughs> pylon first yeah. into a gateway, into a gas, okay. into a nexus, into a core, into so nexus a, first and core. Yep, into a pylon. So it'll go like that: pylon, gate, gas, oh, nexus, yeah. core, gas, pylon. And the reason why this goes like this is because this is uh, this is going to you. You will not supply block. You will still be able to make probes and barely not supply block and once you make oh, that second pylon yeah. you'll be able to do kind of a lot after that like when is the next b2g you'll have a, series coming up you'll, you'll have a lot of uh uh what's it called like range of what you can do like if you make a pylon three supply faster or a three supply later than what you probably seem standard you'll have a lot of room to work with with like little bits of room for error that it won't be really matter uh, after the second pylon's done, because then when the second pylon's done, your nexus will also be getting close to being done, and it's going to give you like this big like more income's going to come in because you have natural probes mining, you have more supply because the nexus gives you a shitload of open supply, and you can add on more as you go as you have money. Oh, you're like, oh cool, I'll just yeah. add this or add that, and then it makes it super easy just to like not fuck it up because it's more forgiving later on. But for the start, okay. for right now, you want to get that nexus down as soon as possible because it sets everything up. And then also you want to make sure your core is properly timed so you're not having it way too fast. And you want to, like, you're not just, like, rushing it the second you can because all it does is it delays your core. Or, sorry, it delays your nexus if you go for a super fast yeah. core. And then if you go for a gas and a pylon super fast, it yeah, fucks everything was, up too. I was, I was thinking before <clears throat> just to make that uh, stock or to prevent Reaper harass. You know? Yeah. And another thing too, here's another time factor here. So a if we look at this, your uh, your barracks or your gateway and his barracks are going to be finishing roughly around the same time, and yeah. your gateway is finishing roughly around like 125 or so. So you can assume, and you even saw it with your probe, his barracks should also be finishing around 125. It doesn't have to be exact on the second, but you know it's going to be roughly about the same. And you build the core right away, right after, and the core is a 36 second build time. A reaper is about the same build time as a core, just in terms of build time. It's a 32 okay. second build time with the Reaper. And then on top of that, even bigger, is the Reaper is actually, you, you confirmed the barracks is at his base. So it's a defensive barracks placement. So the Reaper has to cross the map now, which means yeah. that you have plenty of time to make your Stalker more than you might realize because he's got like, the amount of time it takes you to build the core, it's about the same time to build the Reaper. And then you have another like 30 seconds, like 25 to 30 seconds for him to cross the map. Okay. So, okay. and that's about the build time of a stalker. So, so it, if I go Nexus first, it's not gonna leave me open to Reaper. Right. So if you go, all it is is you just go Nexus before Core, and all okay. that means is is your Core is delayed by about an extra ten seconds, and you still have after your gateway is done, you still have roughly about a minute before the Reaper gets to your base. Okay. And uh, okay. yeah, so it's a it's a lot of time before the Reaper can actually attack you. Because check this out, watch this, just watch this game when your stalker pops out. How much time goes by before, like, so if you made, you made the stalker right away and you chrono boosted it. Now watch how much yeah. time goes by. And again, the difference is about 10 seconds if you go Nexus before core. So will 10 seconds go by? So it it popped out at 228. Will 10 seconds go by before the Reaper gets to your base? We're looking at 238. Yes. And the Reaper's still not okay. here yet. So all that happened is, and, and here's the crazy thing. Your nexus should be going down around 130, right? Like that's like a fair estimate. Like 125 is good 
130 is very standard. Uh, 125 is just like super fast. But uh, it's something you could do if you've ever heard me talk about stacking close mineral patches. Do, do you know what that is, first of all? Really no. quick. Okay, so let me explain that just really quickly. Look at your look at your main mineral line and click on two patches on like the far left. And notice how one of them yeah. it says in the very bottom middle it says how much remaining resources it has, and one of them yes. says fifteen hundred and one of them says seven hundred. Yeah. What that represents is a higher mineral value patch is a close patch, and the, obviously close patches as well are just closer to the nexus. And a uh. far patch is a smaller resource patch, and it's further away from the nexus. <clears throat> and at the start of the game, you start with. 12 workers and you have eight mineral patches per base always and there's always four close and four far patches so what you can do at the start of the game when nothing is going on and you're kind of just waiting for shit to happen you can make sure your probes always have eight probes on the four close patches and four probes on the four far mineral patches which takes you to a total of 12 probes which is what you start with so you you just do a little bit of like managing on the initial split of the ai what it does at the start of the game you just make sure it's stacking close patches and it gives you a boost of minerals at the start of the game and forever from that yeah. point on because you're always mining more efficient okay so that'll be like a 125 nexus if you do that but one okay. th if you don't do that you could probably take a nexus on average around 130 and even if you did a 130 nexus on the clock like one minute 30 second a nexus has a 71 second build time so it should be finishing at 241 so your Nexus should be done right now. And if your Nexus was done right now, it would give you such a boost into this game to just giving you more economy and to mine with. And you can then also start creating probes out of your natural Nexus, which will always give you a higher probe count. Because if you can't make probes right now for the next 40 seconds, that's guaranteed three probes without Chrono Boost with plus a little bit of excess. Because it's a, if you have 40 seconds to wait, Three probes is 36 seconds because it's 12 probes per se per cycle, or uh, sorry, 12 seconds per probe. Uh, okay. And if you chrono boost it, it's even faster. Then it's only like like eight seconds per probe. So, that, like think about how many probes could fit in eight, uh, to 40 seconds if you're chrono boosting it constantly with you know. It's true. Exactly. Okay. Like it's like five fucking probes could be popping out of that nexus. So okay. that's a lot of economy you're missing out on, which is just going to slow your whole build down like drastically. Okay. And the trade-off is your stalker stood here for an extra, like, 15 seconds before the Reaper got to your base. It was just chilling. Yeah. Yeah. I think I tried some cheese in this game, actually, now that I remember. Sure. <clears throat> I don't know. It's not I don't know. Is Foxy Stargate cheese? I don't know. Uh, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's full-on cheese. It's just, it's just it's a little cheesy, but it's not like all-in cheese. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You definitely did some damage with it, which is nice, and uh, that's fine. Um, I would say from that, I, I would tell you, honestly, Yeah. if you were not going, if, if like your plan is to make probes behind this and just uh, go for a, uh, you know, an expansion, if you don't, possibly even take a third base after this i disagree with the continued production out of your stargate like the second you basically what you could do is you could either stack up uh you, you could stack up the fucking uh units out of your stargate before you reveal them and have like maybe two units go in at once that would work or and, and wait so you so you, you, you cut off have what sorry oh so like so Basically, once you reveal the Stargate, you should stop building on the Stargate, is what I'm saying. So, okay, okay. Uh, if you show the first Oracle, don't even build the Void Ray. It's going to accomplish okay. nothing now, and it's just a waste yeah. of your money. It's just put. It's actually taking the lead you just gave yourself and kind of throwing it away. So, okay. you could actually build multiple units out of this Stargate if you're not going to show them with the first unit. You're going to, like, stockpile them, and then go all at yeah. once with, like, two or three units. And be like, surprise, I have a bunch of variants in your base. Uh, yes. Otherwise, just make the one and done if you're going to play like this. Because if your plan is to expand, you did just slow them down a lot. And if you took yeah. a faster third base behind this and went for like a crazy three base timing with like non Stargate bullshit, you'd have yeah, way better success. Or something. Yeah, like if you went like Robo behind this with like Colossus, Stalker, yeah, stuff like I, that. I think that was my plan. Um, and then it just fell apart. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I feel like if you make a void, you're probably going to try and hit his base with the void now. And your money is going to go up and you're going to waste so much time mm -hmm. trying to harass with the void, yeah. right? And it's going to make you yeah. fall further behind. Like, 
Again, it's, gonna, it's just going to take your lead and kind of throw it away. So, so you think that's, that wasn't a terrible idea to... I was like, you know, I'm tired of getting harassed by Terran. I want to fucking send him some shit, too. Yeah, no, if you want to do a proxy target, I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. It definitely... And then, like, he, and then he has a, a Banshee with Cloak, and I was like, all right, game over. <laughs> yeah, that's why you need the Robo. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... And also, another thing I've been going with Terran, just because I've been getting a, a lot of um, Marauder pushes and all this shit, sure. is uh, going Twilight first versus okay. Robo first. What do, you, what do you think about that? I think for you, if you want to do crazy shit where you kind of like mix it up a lot, I'm not going to say you can't do that. That's that's uh, that's something you could do. And going going every single tech bath is always it's it is viable in PVT uh, as long as you know how to play it. You mm -hmm. just got to realize where your strengths are at, with the build. And I would say going council and going Stargate build first definitely relies more on the aggressive side. So it's, it's a bit more pressure on you to get shit done. Because if you invest into those, you don't get damage done. You're actually further behind. This, 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 you know, you know, fair warning. This is not my typical build. I was just kind of oh, like sure. tired again. Yeah, you know, I was just like, all right, it's, let me try a proxy Stargate. Yeah, that's no, all good. I just want to make sure you understand. Yeah. That if you go for Council or Stargate, you have to do damage. Otherwise, your build is so, not as so good as it should be. What if I just do like uh, Council and then just delay the Robo a little bit and then get the Robo? For get, what? What know, purpose are you doing this for? I'm doing it um, for Marauder. Uh, timings because I, I feel like I'm getting kind of like crushed you, by are you talking about like proxy base. no 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 um well occasional proxy uh I guess in, in that scenario I guess uh charge wouldn't be ready either yeah. right because um I, th I think more for a, it's a, like two base I'm seeing it a lot uh, versus Terran is uh, kind of two base all inning me yeah not oh. all in or you know two base like heavy attack like marauder yeah, yeah marauder uh one siege tank maybe one medevac and then I just don't have enough, or I have stalkers, and they just fucking melt, you know? So, I have an idea what can help you a lot here that as well, which is you... I still think you should be going Robo, just just for, like... It's like oh, it's like trading wheels for Protoss, like, when you're, like, learning okay. how to do efficient builds. And what you okay. do is you open up, uh, you know, with a always stalker first, and you make mm -hmm. a sentry second always... Okay. And this, what this entry does is it allows you to have some defensive uh, capabilities with Guardian Shield and or Force Field if it comes down to it. But in general, the biggest thing it gives you of all is it gives you the ability to scout your opponent constantly with a Hallucinated Phoenix, which is super okay. fucking effective. And if okay. you saw with a Hallucinated Phoenix that your opponent was doing a build that looked like he was going Marauders, like you were like, okay, this motherfucker has like five Marines in his base and five Marauders, and he's got three Barracks with two Tech Labs and a Reactor and nothing else. He's just, and he's got an expansion. He's just doing a lot of bio, and it's already looking yeah. like it's worth like 15 supply. What you could do is you could, you could, uh, with your robo, you could make an immortal, and you could get ready to save energy on your nexus just for a second. So you have a uh, overcharged battery that you okay. could just, well, as soon as he shows up at your base, you just overcharge that battery, and you just pound his ass with stalker immortal. It doesn't have to be multiple immortal, just like one. And you could okay. go into like Colossus really fast too. So you, if he waits too long, you and might even have a Colossus, Colossus and an Immortal. And Colossus is good against Marauder, you think? Colossus is good against Marine. Not so Marine. good against Marauder. But if you have Stalker and Immortal and Sentry, even if it's just one Immortal and just one Sentry, you and a, if you have a battery there too, you yeah. should be okay against Marauder okay. opener. Yeah, uh, so that's this game. Let me let me show you the other one because that sure. was kind of the timing kind of Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. And what I want to do as well is I want to give you a build. Uh, it would, sure. like, for... We could do it before this lesson's over. I could just give you a uh, PVT build. And it could Excellent. give you something to strive for. Yeah. Some, <clears throat> work on. some, yeah. some homework. Yeah, yeah. All right. I will, I just, somehow we got out of the party. I think it's because you went offline. Or I don't know. We're back. I got you back again. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> my fault. You're all good. All right. No, no, should I pull up the other one? Yeah. Go for it. Uh, you want to look at PVZ? Uh, PVT. That's... Or you want to look at PVT? A, diff a different replay for PVT? I don't know. What, what, what do you think? Uh, let's do it. Let's see. We could do PVT. We could go really hardcore to PVT and uh, really help you fine-tune some heavy PVT knowledge. Because the thing is, is no matter what I teach you here, it's going to teach you overall fundamentals that should apply to all matchups either way. Okay. Wh which is, uh, like, for instance, that Nexus shit I talked about. That is so yeah. important if you just clean up your first two minutes of the game. So just kind of individually click on the probes to make them go on the uh, closer uh, 
mineral patches. Yeah, it's su it's super easy. All you got to do is just look at the middle of the, the middle of the middle line because it's always gonna have double stacks, because that's where the probes automatically transfer to. Like, watch this game, okay? I'm gonna slow this shit down super fast. So your probes are automatically going to the middle line, and yeah. they're su you actually okay. Holy well, like, fuck! You're only two months into the game, and you're already doing worker splits. Okay. No, well, well, I, I saw you, I saw you do it, and I'll, yeah, I don't, no, I don't understand uh, why. <laughs> I don't good. understand why. So it's like I'll, I'm gonna okay. Do. I'll explain that really fast too. So. If you think about it, think, imagine like if you have like, it's like a fucking geometry problem or something where yeah. you have your workers going all, all of them, all 12 of them are going into yeah. a straight line into the fucking middle line and not all of them spawn where the first, like, so the probe that was on the top left side of the nexus is the closest to those mineral patches. And then every, yes. every probe further down or to the right is further and further and further away. So they have yeah. to travel further and further and further distances. And what happens is, is they worry the way AI mines minerals in StarCraft 2 is it goes it has like a register thing where it goes okay a probe is now leashed onto this mineral patch or it's latched onto it every probe that now touches this patch latch onto a new patch latch onto a new patch so okay. the probe that is closest to the middle patches which is on the top left side of the nexus those will latch on to the patches right away and the probes that are furthest away on the edges of your mineral line or uh, sorry on the edges of the nexus like the, the farthest four the two on both sides they will have like yeah. the longest travel time and they will go to the, the middle of the mineral patch and it will be mined already. And those probes will then yeah. go, oh, well now let's go to the new patches that don't have a latched probe to it. And it will usually be going to the edges of the mineral line. Okay. So they have like the longest walk distance to the mineral patch and then the longest walk distance to the edge of the mineral patch. So it's just a waste of time. And you, you're, you're basically saving the probes. Like if you split like that, you just save those probes about four seconds of wasted time. Uh, to not do that process where they go latch and then latch. And then uh, on top of that, you also just saved uh, more of your time too because the AI also, like the whole mineral line is the same AI. It, like it, it registers like a big radius of the mineral patches that you're working with. And now it tells the probes in the middle, hey, those bottom patches on the bottom left of the mineral line are being latched onto already. So let's not transfer probes to that as fast now. Let's transfer probes more to the top right because those are the ones that are still open. So it's going to give okay. you a more accurate spread on your mineral line. Okay. Uh, and then now if we watch it. So notice how like they all went to the top right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. that's like it's because they're all latching onto the open patches, which now they've done. Okay. And now. So I, I see the top this one of the. It's, there's a close one that there's only one dude on there, yeah. so I'll, 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 okay. And the, the way it tries to go too is the way, AI has it has like a it has like timers on every patch, and the way probes will transfer is if a probe binds onto a patch that is already latched onto with another probe, it will stay on that patch if the probe is almost done with its current mining job, and it's about to have minerals in its hand and leave. So it, imagine if there was like it's like a horse race or something like that where like every probe is like. See who gets it done first. And then, uh, like, the amount of time it takes a probe to mine the mineral patch is always the same, but it's always about how long it took the probe to get in position to mine the patch. So some probes take okay. long, like, because they have to move further down the line. Some probes take longer than others. They don't all start at exactly the same second. And the AI will basically try to register a smart command that will say which patch is going to be done the fastest, and I'll try to auto-transfer to that. And a lot of times what will happen is, is it'll scatter all over the place. There is RNG all the time with this, where it, like the probes don't always do the exact same thing every time, especially if you do what you just did now, where you altered it by doing a side split. So there is not a guarantee that they will saturate close patches. There is a chance they will saturate far patches. And if you just watch it now, you can s the, the middle of the middle line is always far patches. And the, the, you know, the closer to the edges of the middle line is usually always close patches. And okay. one way you can easily tell too, is like I said before, like in the replay, really quick, just double click, like the very bottom left yeah. patch, just double click it. Now yeah, only, yeah, yeah. only like the, yeah. the, you see how the yellow box surrounds like the yeah. close patches, yeah. and you can do the same thing with the far patches, so you can tell which is which. So you just uh, want to okay. you just want to saturate the close patches, and again, if you're in the game and you can't double click it, you can just click on the mineral patch itself by one at a time and go, which one has 900? That's a far patch. Let's not have two okay. on that one. Okay. Uh, and you'll just get it over time too, where it'll just become common knowledge to you. Okay. But, but like right now, you see you have four patches in the middle. If you could transfer two of those middle probes to the one yeah. the one patch right below it, and then the far, the patch on the very far right, if you did yeah. that, you would increase your income by probably like four minerals or five minerals a minute, which is 
It doesn't sound like a lot, but you're no, going to be it, mining it this way for a long time. No, I, I already know she's doing that initial split. I'm able to get my first pylon out. Like, you know, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's, hu it's fucking huge because it adds up every second the game goes on. Yeah. I started doing that like last week because I saw you doing it. <coughs> that's good. That's a, that's definitely a good. Ha that's a fucking amazing habit to develop. And your split also did not look fucked up either. You grabbed two, which is perfect. And you also, uh, you didn't misclick on the up. bottom or something like that. No, I messed up sometimes, you know, like I click and then I, I, I misclick the mineral line, then I forget yeah. to make my probe, and then I'm For like sure. re recalling probes. Oh, also, that's another thing. I'm glad you just said that. The priority should always be probe first, then split. Oh, so build the probe always first. Always probe first. Uh, you should be, if you don't start a probe, like, you should feel like this. If you don't ever start a probe by second one or second zero in the game, you're behind. Yeah. You should feel like, oh. literally feel like that. Because you are. Because okay. if you think about it like this, this is the, the this is something that a lot of people also don't really think about and realize. But if you let's just say hypothetically you're gonna go to 80 probes, okay? That's like yeah. your goal is I'm gonna go 80 probes and I'm gonna take four nexus or whatever. The main nexus is not gonna make 20 of those probes, and every subsequent nexus is gonna make 20 probes. That's that's not how it works. The main nexus is gonna probably make 40 to like 45 of those 80 probes. The natural is gonna make probably 20 to 25. The third base is probably gonna make like five to ten. Or like maybe okay. like eleven, or like the fourth base is gonna make maybe like three, because it's yeah. as it's finishing, you're gonna be already there. So yeah. the main next, the first nexus is has the biggest job of all, and if you delay, if you delay any of the probes when it doesn't need to be delayed, it then subs it just delays every probe after. It's like a ripple effect that slows down all of your money. So you okay. you definitely want to make sure your money you're making that probe like fucking as soon as possible. And uh, over here in, in this map, is this correct pylon? Walla. Honestly, I was about to, I was about to talk about that too. I was gonna say, you know what you should do? Just stop doing this. It's actually Why? wrong. It, it it's not it, it's it's more hassle than it's worth. And okay. uh, this also was a good build for like it was like it's something you still can do. I'm not saying it's bad, but in general, if you're not doing uh, let, let me just say it like this for for now for now, don't do it and just learn how to play defensive solid gameplay, and then come okay. back to playing like this. Where if your build and play styles are basically to be doing cheeky shit like a proxy stargate, doing something like this is good because the only the only benefit that this has is making it harder for Terror to scout you with a Reaper, so it has a higher chance that your sh weird shenanigans can work and not get scouted and spotted right away. Uh, so it, you you don't think there's any benefit in uh, at least pro, uh, the Reaper access into your main to kill the probes? You should kill the Reaper either way. And what you should, well, the way I, I okay. do it now, and it's it's more economical as well if you do it the way I'm about to tell you, is okay. you just attach the mineral line to the wall or the gas to the wall. Either way. You just basically build, like, for instance, uh, if you build a pylon on the bottom left yes. of your mineral line, where, like, you see how there's that one little, like, corner gap where you can tuck a pylon in the yeah. bottom right? Or at the bottom left, yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah it's, like, right yeah, above yeah. the gas. You would attach those resources together, and you could build a gateway to the left side of that. And what that would do is it creates a wall in your base. And if your stalker pops out, and the Reaper goes on the north side, you could trap him into a corner and then kill him as he tries to go back and beyond. So he has to go past your Stalker into a corner and then go back across your Stalker again to get out of your base. He can't just do so, a loop, essentially. So the gap between the middle and the gas, that's where you think uh, the first pylon should go? Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to be exactly there. You just want the concept of you want to attach the middle line, or you, you want to attach the, the resources to the wall so that you create a, a block point to where if the Reaper tries to do a loop behind your middle line, he gets stuck, okay. and he has to go backwards. Okay. And when he goes backwards, okay. he gives your stalker like more time to auto attack it, because he has to go back okay. through you again. And your stalker will always kill the reaper if he does this. All right. So, so abandon this wall off. For now, yeah, it's it's not worth. It. And the the big reason why is because if you get cheesed, it's so fucking hard to defend yourself. Because especially if it's like tank based, because uh, they could just siege your wall, and you're like, oh, okay, well, my core is getting sieged, and my gateways are getting sieged, and my pylons dying, and I just have to rebuild it, and this sucks. Like, I'm losing my production while I'm getting all into this. is unfortunate. But if you build okay. it in the back, it's, like, not threatened at all. And okay. it, uh, it just it causes a constraint on the Reaper to, like, actually harass properly. And, uh, you know, okay. if you kill the Reaper, here's the beautiful thing. If you if he goes Reaper first, and he goes in your base, and it dies before you even throw your tech down, well, he's blind anyways. So you can then go back to doing whatever you want to do anyways. It just it increases the chances that you kill the Reaper, rather than just zone out the reaper yeah okay okay yeah yeah because yeah usually they get in and then they get out yeah uh if they come to the front exactly
All right, so I'm gonna go back to your vision so I don't see the Terran. Your overall build idea up again up to this point has been good though. Your pylon, chrono boost, uh, gateway, and gas have been nice. Right now with your nexus at 19 supply, this is when you want to do something, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you want to rally your nexus down to the natural. Okay. So that at 20, the probe is already spawning out of the side of your nexus to go down to the natural. And then as soon as that probe spawns, you want to re-rally your nexus to the gas in your uh, in your main base. So you don't like leave the rally to the natural and have multiple probes go down there. And okay. then, to, then this is the only time as well where you will cut probes for just a second. Uh, okay. So this is where like the two minute, the first two minutes of the game are, are honestly kind of important with the build order. And then beyond that, it doesn't matter. And it's about getting your nexus down and getting your core down early. And then your build flows great after that. But it's about ma mainly prioritizing the nexus. So, so at 19, rally to the natural. And then uh, when, when you hit 20 supply, kind of cut probe production until yes. I get the nexus so uh, you, core up. Perfect. So you, you don't stop making probes until you're at 20 supply. But you rally, okay. you rally down to the natural at 19. So probe 19 goes down there. And okay. then uh, so at 19, when you're at 19, one of your probes will be like how it is right now. It'll be going to his base across the map to scout. And, it, and this is the tricky part where if you do it properly, you'll have your probe kind of entering his base right as your probe is about ready to build the Nexus. So okay. what you want to do is, is you want to just, just take a fucking glance and be like, is your gateway or sorry, is my gateway the same as your barracks? That's all you need to look at. It's like, is, is it looking like it's the same? Is your is your barracks about done? Just like my gateway is going to be about done. Okay. And if the answer is yes, don't give a shit We're about good. anything. It's standard. You're fine. Yeah. If the answer is okay. no, and it's fucking like, oh, what? Okay, your barracks is even, not even there at all. Or it's super, super, super late. You can still scout deeper into his base if it's allowed, if he doesn't have double depot there. Uh, yeah. But if, even if he does have double depot there, a great reaction to just this in general is as soon as your core is done, with pylon number uh, three, which should be at your natural, you just build a shield battery right away. And okay. then just, just one battery, and then you'll be fine. And then do your build as is, as normal. So okay. uh, pylon one and two go next to the main nexus. Pylon, pylon one and two go next yeah. to Yeah, okay. and then pylon three goes down near the natural. So pylon three okay. basically will be built with your first probe that goes down to the natural after your main is entirely saturated, the gases and mineral lines included. So it'll be like probe 23 will build pylon 3. What's up? Yeah, okay. Okay, sorry, your mic kind of cut out there. All right, so now, yeah, like right here, you like it. It's definitely like, we'll, we'll kind of skip it. We just talked about the build. I'll give you the build. We'll just skip it now, though, because you're doing the same as last time, which is definitely less yeah. efficient. I well, thought like, that was the right move. Yeah, just, it's, yeah. All, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, check this out with your uh, with your probe scout. We'll talk about that really fast. So this is kind of an exact exact example of what we just talked about. So double yeah. gas is or sorry, double depot is locking you out. But again, who yeah. gives a fuck about double depot locking you out? That is whatever. It means he just built a depot a little bit earlier than he would have liked because he wanted to wall you out to make you feel like you don't know what's going on. But you do because you see the barracks versus your your gateway. It's the fucking yeah. same. So this is okay. standard so far. And this is, this is exactly like what you're doing right now. There's nothing weird going on uh, yet. This, like, there's no proxy racks yet. Like, in terms of, if there was a proxy racks that you needed to worry about, this barracks would be much later. But let's just say, hypothetically, he was going to build a second racks behind this that was proxied, and he didn't want you to know about it because he's trying to, like, hide his scout, like, hide your scout from him. What happens is, mm -hmm. is that barracks, even though the second racks would be proxied, it's actually not threatening at all because your battery would be done before any units pop out of it. So if you, uh, like, your stalker would be out, your battery would be done, you would just, like, brush it off like a fucking mosquito. You're like, oh, I don't, okay, what was that? Like, that was just annoying. And so if he does this uh, double supply depot barracks, I should be thinking I got to build a battery just in case, or no? You should always build a battery just in case, but you should only rush the battery if it's a... If it feels like it's going to be threatening, and this because of the barracks being the same as your gateway, it's not threatening. Yeah. So instead of Sorry. rushing the battery, you just build it mm -hmm. once you can afford it. So you don't okay. you don't prioritize it essentially. You just like but once it, you. So you're th you're saying most TVP or PVT, I should build a battery at the natural. 
You should always build a battery in the natural. It's always just, build a battery. Yeah, always. Uh, it's just based on if you okay. prioritize it right when the core is done. Or okay, okay. if you build it maybe always. like 20 seconds after because you're prioritizing your gateway production and like your probe okay. production first. Okay. Uh, so like gateway versus barracks, if it's the same, you don't have to go crazy on like, oh, battery need it? No, you don't need it. You're fine. Build it like 20 seconds later once you have okay. all your shit running properly and, and then you're good to go. Uh, so, uh, and also what this kind of means is, generally speaking, is there's very likely a gas. I would I would assume there is very likely a gas behind this for Terran, and he's just gonna. Like he hasn't made his choice yet as to what he could do, but he might go for a. He could who knows he could go for a really quick second command center. He could go for a normal gas build where it. You don't really know what it is, but he's he is playing standard. He's just trying to hide it. He could be going for. Uh, uh, proxy racks, but again, if that were to be the case, who gives a shit? Because it's not going to happen fast enough now for it to be threatening. Uh, okay. It'll ha it'll happen later than the, the fact that it should have to actually do damage to you, so you would be just fine. So this so far, what I would want, what I would say for you is, if I was like sitting next to you watching you play, I'd be like, okay, you don't know what he's doing yet, but it's not threatening. Figure out what it is with your sentry. So if you go stalker uh, then sentry, yeah. your sentry figures out what it is, and at that point, if it is threatening, then you could actually still have time to react to it. Okay. Yeah, you know, like when I saw that, I thought some shenanigans maybe. Yeah, it looks, looks like, like it. He wants you to think <laughs> that because he's like, you can't see it. What are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I some, some shenanigans. That's why I'm kind of. Yeah, no, uh, I see it's gotten all over the place. But again, like again, like I was saying. If you think about it, the the gateway and the barracks, they're both 46 second build times. And if his barracks that was proxied was started like 30 seconds after the barracks was started at his base, because he would have gone depot, barracks, depot, then barracks again. It'd be like a seriously, like a solid 30 seconds later than uh, uh, the your what your gateway is. And that's the same amount of build time as your core, essentially. So he'd be starting to build out of his standard barracks, which is only Marines or a Reaper as you start to build stalkers so you would not give a shit because one stalker will destroy one reaper or one marine that's why yeah. it kind of like does not matter to you okay it only again it would only matter if the barracks that was proxied was first because his barracks you saw that was out the top of the ramp was like 20 percent of the way done when yours is 80 percent of the way done and you're like what the why is there a discrepancy there like that that's when you want to rush that battery because then you'd have a battery finishing as your stalker finishes, which could very well be like a marauder walking up to your ramp right now. But if you had a stalker and a battery, you would destroy a marauder. Okay. Yo, Arc, Arc Project, thank you very much for the, the raid. Uh, Alright. So now you're going for your council. <coughs> and yeah, again, that, that's just all about... Uh... And then... Okay, so... Now, this, we'll go back and talk about it for a second, because uh, this one is actually pretty fast. So now, if you look at your money, you, yeah. ha you have, uh, this is also a big deal. You're not making a second unit out of the gateway. We'll go back to right when the unit finished. So your unit pops out of the gateway at 2.31. Now time, okay. like this is the biggest deal of all about becoming better at StarCraft in general. And it's making sure you always utilize existing production constantly. So making sure things like this gateway is just pumping, pumping, pumping. Like you just don't stop pumping the gateway. Because uh, mm. if you do, that's the kind of shit that will get you killed. And uh, yeah. same thing with your Nexus, making sure your probes are just pumping the whole time as well. And, like, except for that one moment where it's the 20 supply thing, where you want to get that core down okay. and then go back to pumping probes the whole time. Otherwise, it's just do your best to make sure it's pumping the entire time. And... Uh, if you made a sentry, like right now, you could, like, your resources right now is 160 minerals. You could totally afford a sentry, and you could then yeah. totally afford a battery, and you still have yeah. probes in production. And you, so you would, this is when it would be a good idea to make the battery. So this, this is when, if you feel like you're not being threatened, you always make a battery around now, because it does not hiccup anything in your build. It does not make your production stop. And then after yeah. your battery, you could, uh, especially if he does that double fucking depot wall off thing where you're just kind of also feeling a little bit suspicious, where you have not yet confirmed that there is a command center. You don't know yet. Uh, this could be that moment where 
uh, you know, you prioritize soccer gateway and the century, then make a battery, and then after you once again have even more money left over, then you make your tech plus your second gateway. And so robo, robo first, then second gateway. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, I would, I personally do that. I always, I always try to make my robo during the time that I'm building a century, and then I build the gateway mm -hmm. as well after it. Because at this point okay. in time, too, if you're doing the thing where, remember how we talked about your Nexus timing? If your Nexus yeah. was finishing at around 240, yeah. like, and right now you have probes starting to mine the natural, <clears throat> and this is around the time you're starting to build the century, you're going to start having more and more money, like, ready to go. And, you know, you're, you're going to have a nice overall income. You could easily afford the battery followed up with, like, again, centuries in production, which is it's super cheap on the minerals. And then you'll have the... Uh, the, the robo and the second gate and then you'll go back to making stalkers again right after with probes constantly pumping and it's it's just super big because uh the whole probe thing we talked about like if probes are mining out of the natural your income will not be 867 or like you know around 900 it'll constantly keep going up and up and up and up by about 60 every probe you make for the natural because it's going to get efficient mining because it's a brand new mineral line so by like uh you know like three minutes your economy is going to be, if we're talking like 40 seconds, or sorry, 20 seconds from now, that's roughly almost two probes per nexus. And that's 60 probe, sixty minerals per probe. That's like 240 minerals increased on what you're already getting. So you're going to already be breaking like almost 1,100 minerals or something like that. Like in just 20 seconds from now. So like you're, you're, it, it just makes your money go up faster so you can actually afford to sustain what you're doing here. Uh, which is why, yeah, that's generally why you can afford to do all of it. Okay. Yeah, you're mid I think you've had the battery up in the other yeah. century. I should have been fine. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. Because your stalker popped out at like 2.30, and your battery only takes... And you should, have be, you should have been starting the battery around the time when the stalker just popped out. Whereas if yeah. you were panicking, you'd want to make the battery and when the stalker starts. Uh, but the stalker, or the, sorry, the battery would have finished 29 seconds after the stalker popped out. And the stalker popped out around 2.30. So your battery would, would have been done just about three done. minutes. Yeah. And so you, get, you think entry, battery, stalker should uh, defend? 100%, the yes. At least. Yeah. Because he's got one Marauder five Marine. And here's the crazy thing. If I were to ask, so like, check this out. Look at the damage of his army, okay? So we'll give you some numbers here really fast. This is this is like math we'll give you really quick here. A Marine does six damage uh, every 0. 0.6 seconds. So it all, like, we'll just give you a really, we'll, we'll even like, we'll kind of like break down like an estimation here and you can agree or disagree with me. If six is uh, times two is now 12 every two, uh, 1.22 seconds, we'll say it does about 10 damage every second, roughly. Okay. And that's per Marine. So he has four Marines. That's 40 damage a second. Now he's got a Marauder that does, uh, to, a, to a Stalker, it does 20 damage every about one second. So now if we have 10 damage a second per Marine and about 20 damage a second per Marauder, and there's four Marines and one Marauder, that's 40 plus 20. So that's 60 damage a second that he's okay. pumping out of his army right now right here. A battery, by default, can heal 51 shields a second. And then... So it can almost negate, just by itself, it can almost negate the entire damage of this ball of units right here. And it, you got to really think about it like this as well. Oh, if you're yeah. fighting his army like this, and your army keeps going down, up, down, up, down, up, because it's getting healed constantly by the battery, his army's yeah. not getting healed by anything. And as soon as you kill a Marine, and another Marine, and another Marine, his down. DPS goes down. Exactly. And the, crazy, the even crazier thing of all is if you do battery overcharge, because you're like, oh, fuck, proxy, battery overcharge. Well, what does overcharge do? Let, let me tell you right now. It's fucking crazy. It's, it's <laughs> overpowered as shit. It, what it does is for 14 seconds, it makes your battery cost zero energy to heal your units. And then on top of so, that... So does that does that allow the battery to kind of recharge its it energy does. too? Yeah. Um, and so but like, so you, you could, in theory, use it once the battery is out of energy and then it goes into full overcharge mode and it slowly regenerates energy while it's in overcharge mode. You okay. could do that. But that's not, that's not even what you'd want to do. What you'd want to do is you want to overcharge it like as soon as he commits to the fight and you're like oh shit i'm getting like pushed let's overcharge right now because what it does as well the second part of it is not only for 14 seconds does it have free healing but 
it doubles how fast it heals for 14 seconds. So instead of oh. healing for 51 shields a second, it heals for 102 shields a second. And if he's only pulling out 60 DPS, your unit is going to heal substantially faster than it's going to take damage. And you're going to live forever, or for the next 14 seconds, guaranteed. Nice. So one battery plus an overcharge. Honestly, you'd even beat this without overcharge, but if you had overcharge, it's overkill. You'd fucking destroy it. But one battery in these two units would crush this. And you got to realize as well, here's the even bigger thing. If you're making units that take 30 seconds a piece to, to spawn and your stalker popped out at 2.30, if we're talking at 3.30, you should have another stalker popping out in two seconds. Yeah. yeah. So your, your third yeah. unit is also late. And you're also... Here's another thing too: is you should not even be chrono boosting your gateway. I think you uh, you might have done Freak it because you felt paranoid and you're like, I don't want to die. Uh, but you should actually not chrono like chrono boost your gateway the once the first time. That's great the, for the first stalker. Yeah, right? for the first stalker because it's really good to stop reapers from fucking you up, and so your probes yeah, yeah. don't take any damage. So chrono it once and that's it. Yeah, but then after that first stalker, literally just let it be, and. Uh, just make stalker a century stalker whatever afterwards and the century only takes 26 seconds so re actually realistically uh you should you should actually have a stalker have been popping if your first stalker popped out at two or uh, 230 your yeah. next century and stalker sub uh, that came after they should have finished both of them by 326 because it's actually four seconds under 30 if you know what i mean it's not 30 plus yeah, 30 yeah. it's 26 plus 30. so mm -hmm. you should have easily had three units by then so you could have actually had yeah. two stalkers and a century to fight four marines and a marauder. Did, did you, um, for my scouting in this game particularly, because I find it not very useful once I see the ramp is blocked. Sure. I just send my probe home. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't like, right? Like, that's fine. I, I'm not going to say that's wrong. Uh, like, if you, it, I would say if you're feeling really advanced, you could uh, leave your probe at the, maybe like the back of his natural, like under where the middle line is. Uh, and you can okay. check into his, his ramp again, maybe like 30 seconds later. This way, it would tell you multiple things like, is there an add-on on this barracks? Or is he just pumping units right away? Uh, is there... Because what if he went like for a tech up super fast and he was making Marauder super quick? Or what if that's yeah. just going to make Marines? Or what if it's going to make Reaper? What if it lifts off and now he uh, puts, you know, something else there or some shit? Like, what if he built a reactor there and then he puts a factory onto it? What if he actually so, just straight up builds a command center and he brings it over there? Like, and he actually lands in the natural while your probe's there. So in this scenario, I would go and see the tech lab, then I should be thinking Marauder, right? Coming. Uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. If you saw a tech lab at his base, you, and you, you, you like poked up the ramp and you went, what the fuck, he's got a tech lab. That is not for Stimpak. Like he's making Stimpak, but look, you know, the game's ending before it even is irrelevant. So yeah. I would not be worried about, oh, he's going Stimpak, because it's, it's, this is not a good build. This is definitely an awkward build for Terran. It's not going to be for concussive. Uh, like, it, I guess it could be for concussive shells because it's mainly going to be for Marauder. It's probably not going to be for Combat Shield. And the reason why it's not going to be any of these upgrades of Combat Shield or Stimpak is because they both take a while to, to do. One takes mm. 100 seconds. The other takes 79 seconds. But they both also require kind of like longevity to be useful. Like, you're not going to just sit there and wait and wait and wait for Stimpak and then try to like win the game. Uh, be yeah. because like it would make more sense if he was going to go for a tech lab and go snip pack if he had a natural because yeah. he's like developing into a later stage of the game which is where snip pack actually shines more it doesn't make as much sense if he's going to one base all in you with snip pack because if he waits and waits and waits he misses his window that. to kind of kill you with an all in yeah so okay. it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that it's going to be first impact because even if it was, it's just going to be way down the line and you should have easily enough shit to defend it at that point. Uh, so, yeah, if I were you and I was like, oh, one base, awkward, tech lab, he's going to be making some fucking Marauder. It very, seems like very Marauder-esque. And okay. then uh, if you and here, even furthermore, if your probe actually caught the move out of those four Marines of Marauder, like as you went up yeah. the ramp, he was like walking down the ramp and you're like, oh, shit, okay, he's literally pushing me. Well, yeah. I would be like, maybe just to be on the extra safe side because you know you're going to go in. Now, because you've mm -hmm. confirmed it, now you could go back to Chrono Boosting your gateway because you've confirmed he's going to... This is a do-or-die attack for him right now. Uh, mm -hmm. And you could even play super safe and maybe build a second battery and a second yeah. pylon, like at your natural where the, the ramp is, or like yeah. in that area. So just in case he focus fires the pylon or the battery, yeah. you have a backup. 
Okay. All right. And a huge thing too with your sentry, if you had a battery here, and again, if because your sentry was also a bit delayed, if your sentry had enough energy for guardian shield, which it would have had had it not been delayed, if you pop guardian shield against this right here with a battery shield next to you, uh, your units will never die. Because uh, remember how I said Marines can average probably like about 10 damage a second if you just wanted to estimate yeah. it. Now it's going to be uh, instead of like 6 plus 6 into like 1.2, now it's going to be 4 plus 4 into 1.2, which, what is that? Maybe like 6 to 7 DPS a second? Somewhere oh, yeah, in that range, because yeah. you have the guardian mm -hmm. shield like just dropping two damage off every shot of the marines, and it even drops shots yep. off the marauder, like two damage off the marauder. Mm -hmm. The marauder isn't mm -hmm. as, as substantial though, because it goes from twenty to eighteen, but the marines go from six to four, which is fucking humongous. That's thirty, or, yeah, it's like thirty-three percent of their damage. Uh, yeah. So that would make your units just like tank like champions. So now, even without uh, the overcharged battery, your standard shield battery would easily outheal that damage. Okay, and then. Uh, one other thing I was wondering, like, what do you think the best uh, Protoss counter for uh, mass marauders? Like, if the guys just going mass, you know, with some meta vax, just make some immortals with it. Like Blink Stalker, okay. immortal. Uh, like you can, like you don't have to go mass immortal. Uh, actually, wait, you're, this is plat, so yeah, you should. I'm just kidding. You totally should go mass immortal. <laughs> mass uh, immortal. Because you're doing like B to gym shit, so that is, uh, or like you, you, you're familiar with it, right? I'm not crazy. Or, yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, Immortals would be fucking wonderful. Stalkers would be great. Uh, just getting Blink for the sole purpose of if he's dropping your base, suddenly you mm. Blink at him and you just kill a medevac and problem solved. Uh, so you Blink forward to get the medevac. Yeah, like definitely kill the medevac. So you just eliminate the whole aspect of mobility for him. And if he doesn't fully unload the medevac, all the monitors die inside of it. Uh, Do you, uh, with Charge Light has kind of no role in that? It does, but it's later. So, you so would, I was kind of prioritizing charge lot to <clears throat> combat mass marauders, but you think that's not... Well, immortals just pound the fuck out of them. Okay. And then on top of that, if you're always playing defensive, your batteries... Like, if, you, if you're getting attacked at your base and you have a battery at your nexus, no mm. problem. And, it uh, like, if you want to as well, let's just say he drops your main. And let's just say, hypothetically, there's no battery there. And let's say it's two mm. medevacs full of marauders, and you have, like, eight stalkers and one immortal coming back to defend that. And you want to be mm. extra, extra safe and not lose your stalkers, you could very well take your two gateways and you could just warp in like two zealots as your mm. stalkers engage and your immortal engage. And his marauders might waste like six seconds killing the two zealots and then you're popping a medevac in the meantime or you're popping up some of his marauders in the meantime. But So so you, th you think blink before charge? Yes, 100%. That's near. Yeah. It's because it's once you have it, you don't have to be aggressive with it and be super fancy with it. It's just really easy to be defensively accurate. Like... Like, just blink forward yeah, to kill the if, medevacs. Exactly. If you're at your third and he drops your main and you go to your main and you blink at him and you focus fire medevac, focus fire medevac. Or even if you don't focus fire, if you just blink at him and he panics and loads up his medevac and the medevac dies, fucking, there you go. Boom. You've just killed like a whole yeah. pressure that the Terran did to you. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and then, but so what I uh, now I want to kind of give you a replay if you if you uh, if you're down. Uh, just so yeah, I can give you a build that would just make sense for you. And this is what I think you should be aiming for every game against Terran specifically. So, so I, I quit the game now, right? Yeah. Quit replay? Yeah, and then I'll, I'll make a game and I'll invite you to it. No, I think I got disconnected off you again. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why it's going on, but it's all good. All right. Now I'm going to make it a Terran. Okay. So again, uh, while I'm doing this, feel free to ask any questions. If there's anything on your mind, uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. And otherwise, I can watch the team as a replay later. Or? Yeah, uh, I'll tell you. I'll, like, so basically, when this is over, just go to your replays and make sure you re rename this so it's not just called like Light Shade Forty Five or some shit. Okay, okay, okay. You can just call it like Vibe Example or something. Okay. So I'll do the probe split because you did it too, which is fucking solid. Now I will split to close patches with all my probes. So you go there. You go there, and I've just now done close uh, split yeah. on every probe patch. It was that easy. Okay. Just like two clicks. Okay. And then I can take this probe, and I can go behind the mineral patch and just build a pylon. Connect it. Mm, okay. And then... 
get ready to build that gateway. I'll rip a probe off the middle line so I can actually build it right on time when the pylon's done. And then I can build my gas, or I can uh, build a gas here, and I can go scout. And I can now try to boost my probe and get out, and you know, go see what's going on. And I get now I'm actually rerouting the nexus to like patches with only one, to the last remaining far patches, so I can try to while I'm doing nothing, I'm trying to get two oh, per patch. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And now I have two per, two probes per patch. Now I rally my nexus to the gas. It pops one probe out. I rally it to my natural. It's going to pop one probe out. I'm going to rally it back to the gas. Meanwhile, my probe is about to enter the base. Oh. So this is what I was yeah. talking about, where it's like your, your scout's going to enter the base right as you're going to want to build that nexus. So you just yeah. want to look, how's that barracks versus my gateway? You can see it like right now. Oh, cool. It's started at the same time. You scout the gases. And then meanwhile, don't forget to go grab your nexus. So just don't get over caught up in scouting. Just try to go grab the probe to build the nexus with the one that went to the natural, and you're good. And then you cut a probe, you build your core, and now you can start probing again, and you're good to go. And you've just done the build. Essentially, for the biggest part, the hardest part of it, which is the multitask of scout and build nexus, is now that, over. Uh, probe. Okay. And now you can build with another new probe here with a new gas. You can uh, build a new pylon. And then rally. Yeah, when do you want to build that pylon? Though? You want to build but, it uh, as soon as you build the nexus. Once you have uh, enough money, and you can, just, you can just build it with probe twenty, essentially, that spawns in your base. The pylon, the second pylon. Yeah, Here, I'm gonna. I'll pause and say it. So, probe one, two, three, all saturate. This is after your mineral line's done. Okay, so disregard the sixteen probes in the middle line. Probes one, okay. two, and three on the first gas. Those yeah. probes all saturate the gas, but the order it goes into is it goes first probe saturates gas. Second probe goes down to build the nexus. Third probe okay. saturates gas. But then probe two builds the nexus and comes back and saturates the, the gas. So it still goes, those three probes saturate that gas. But yes. uh, but specifically, so I, let me just, I didn't actually say the core. So probe one, gas. Probe two, nexus, then gas. Probe three, core, then gas. If that makes sense. So mm -hmm. probe two oh. has a building first and then, it makes the, and then it goes into the gas. Probe three makes the core and then okay. goes into the gas. Okay. And then the pylon comes after that. Yes, and then well then no, then probe four, which is going to be the first probe on your second gas, builds the uh, other okay. gas, and okay. then he builds the pylon. Okay, and then you can rally the nexus to that gas as well, and just let probes two and three also get on that gas, and as it's done, it's fully saturated, and then as soon as you're at twenty two probes in the main, which is six gas and sixteen mineral, re rally down to the natural, and then the first probe that spawns out of that. So probe 23 can now build your pylon at your natural and you're good to go. Also, okay. your scouting probe, when it comes back to your base, can be one of the three probes that mines the second gas. Okay. Game resumed. So now probe is here, and now we can rally our probes down to the natural. And now we go chrono boost on probe, stalker, chrono boost that too, and we can make a pylon at our natural. And now we're good to go. <coughs> and you can even grab your probes too. This is also a good trick to do because you don't waste a lot of running time. Have your probes hug the nexus and then as soon as it's done, just highlight them and hit C. And they return cargo and they start mining. Uh, so they don't just have a big lap up to the main. And then this is standard shield battery timing right here. Like as I start this, as I start the sentry, I make the battery. You can make the battery as you start the stalker if you're paranoid, if you're like an all-in's coming. And then now we have a little bit of excess money, so we can make the robo and the gate, the second robo, the second gate and the robo. And we're still just making probes and stalkers. Okay. And then, and then you scout the sentry. Yep. And then it, yeah, we can just keep. You, you can uh, apply Chrono Boost to your Nexus. Um, at the natural and you know if you, if you feel like it was standard you don't have to save any energy but if you feel like you're gonna get all in try to save at least like 50 energy uh, on your nexus so that you don't get fucked by you know an all-in that's gonna hit you out of nowhere so that way you have battery overcharge and now your sentry has enough energy to scout and you go scout and this tells you everything you put your scouting phoenix on the control group or not? no I just shift click around his base and then when my sent when I look at the minimap and when it's close to his base, you can uh, just check it out. Uh, you can always uh, control it if you want to, but I would say for now in plat, 
You don't need to worry about controlling it. Just get in the habit of doing it at the right time. And now, look, it's like, oh, look, look, fucking Stalker Marauder. If this is what you saw in your game, immediately do this. Fucking second battery, second pylon. And then just keep making units. And once your national is fully saturated, you can take your gas, and you can get ready to take your third base. And you go um, immortal first. Yep. Then yeah. It just keeps you safe in case it is what it, what it looks like it is, if it is that. Now we're super fucking solid to where we could just be like, cool, an immortal will pound your ass as you approach my base. And now we can saturate our gas. And we're still just making stalkers and immortals. And, and probes. Probe priority, stalker second priority. You want to go to Colossus? Then, we, we will, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Actually... And, and above diamond, or sorry, above uh, above this league in diamond, I would say yes. But again, if this is platinum, just make just make immortals for now. It'll keep it'll make your life so much easier. Because if you go colossus and you go against, uh, if you go up against marauder, you do have to micro. Otherwise, you're gonna get fucked up. Like colossus don't trade that great if you just stand there. Okay, so we can saturate our third with a bunch of probes. And now that our third is done and he still hasn't attacked us yet, we could be like, cool, let's make a battery to our third. So always do this as well. So it's like, as you're going to like take another base, pop and pop at least like one battery at it. Okay. And you'll just have what like about, a... Um, Twilight Council? You take that after your full, third's fully saturated. It's too early to take it right now. Okay. So I would like right about now, honestly, our third's looking great right now. You're gonna to want to take your third or your council. We can take our all of our upgrade buildings, so council and double forge. And then now as well, we can take our fourth base. And while we still make, oh, this is probably gonna be our last round of stalkers, and I'll, t I'll explain why in just a second. But uh, now we have a, another nexus going down, and a couple of pylons to set it up. Probes are the priority, then production is the second priority, but it's still a big priority in the first place. Okay, now our upgrades are done, so now we're we're getting to a really solid probe count, so and we're also starting upgrades now because we're fully saturated on three bases. I so, can start upgrades fast. Okay, I'm gonna, so what I did <laughs> was I clicked the I just clicked the council and I hit B for blink, and then I green boxed the two forges together and I hit G A. G okay. Because if you have both if you have both forges selected, then you hit the hotkey for both upgrades. It does not make both of them start in one forge. It'll the smart AI will once again go, open forge, make an upgrade. Open forge, make another upgrade. Okay. okay. So that, that's all I did. I just green box click or green, green box hit the hockey, green box hit the hockey. Okay. Game and now we're gonna start making zealots. And the reason why we're gonna start making zealots is because now that the council's done, we're gonna make our Templar archives. And we're going to chrono boost out our upgrades. So, uh, council plus forges. And we're going to go into archons with char charge lots and immortals, essentially. So, stalkers is... Well, they, we have what we have now, but that's that's it. We're not going to make more than that. We just A-move that army. Who gives a fuck about it? Uh, now our money's also getting kind of crazy high pretty fast. So, let's make a lot of gateways. Let's make like an extra like four gates or five gates. So, just like add on some production here. And we have a bunch of extra probes on our third base, so send them to our fourth, because our fourth is just now finishing. Is there like a stalker count that you... Roughly like 12, 12 to like 16. Somewhere in there is great for this build. So right now, we're at 13. And the reason why is because if you're making probes on point, you should be hitting uh, that moment when you're like, oh, third's fully saturated, let's make council, uh, double forge, and then eventually go into the archives right after. Right around the time when you have like 12 stalkers. Mineral field. And that's assuming you've also maintained maximum production on the gateways. If these numbers are fucked up and you're like, wait, why are mine so much different? It's probably because there is in one way, shape or one way or another, there's a bunch of downtime in your production with either the gateway or with the probes. And you're missing moments uh, where you should be building shit. And now, we, now that we have uh, 
our blink. We're getting charged right after. And now that we have forges almost done with 1-1, one, one, we can start 2-2. Two, two, and now we can start making a bunch of uh, Templar. And getting ready to make 2-2 two, two upgrades. So 2-2 two, two upgrades just started. More of another mortal started. A lot of other gateways are finishing. And we're just going Archon as a priority to spend our gas. And then going charge lots for the remainder. Because Archons are better. And now we're almost maxed out. Just after 9 minutes. So we're, we're getting there pretty fucking quick. And uh, we can transfer some probes that are oversaturated in like the main base, for instance, and send them down to a new base. And we're going to max out here pretty fucking fast in a second. Just about there. Keep kind of boosting your upgrades. And we're maxing out at at uh, 933. So now ideally you would want have wanted to have been scouting the map too. Like say we have a zealot going down and up on the map and we're just checking for where bases are. You'd want to know where his expansions are ideally and now with this timing you're going to have a charge blink timing. So blink would have been useful to defend yourself because you had it a lot earlier than what charge is finishing at now. You had it for like the last like minute and a half or so. But now that we're ready to go, we have we have a nice, well-rounded army. We have charge. We have blink. We can just go for it. See what happens. And behind this, we can now go into a bunch more gates, and like like maybe like two more robos, and then a bunch more gates. And uh, hypothetically, say you, you see a bunch of liberators or some shit. That's when you go to Stargate and uh, Tempest or something. You could just make stalkers against a bunch of liberator. If you just macro okay. properly, you can literally beat it with stalker. But if you okay. wanna if you wanna take it to Stargate, you totally nah, can. I, I'll prefer just stock and just probably just blink at them if I can, right? Okay, yeah, that's fine. That we have that does right. work. And it's really right now, I don't even give a fuck about my army. A lot of people get caught up so hard at this moment to be like, Oh, what about the army though? What I care about now is doing shit like this. Like look at all my expansions. I'm gonna take yeah. battery cannon at every base now, because again, what if it's liberator? What if he does like five different liberators at five different bases? <laughs> what I can do now is I can make AI clean up the problem for me without even being there because I just make cannons everywhere. So now I make cannon battery at all my bases. So now I can deal with that shit if it happens. And I can also better now deal with like drops if they happen too. It buys time for warp ins to happen at every base. And I just increased my production like crazy. So now I have like 24 production buildings that I can just fucking slam out here of just fuck loads of gateway units. And like if I, if I lose an army, I'm instantly remaxed. Instantly remaxed. And uh, if I'm looking at my bases too, like Natural's getting mined out, so I need another expansion. And a general rule of thumb with expansions is, you want to be expanding about every two minutes, roughly. Because every two minutes, another base is going to mine out. Because okay. your main base starts at second zero. Your Natural starts between, like, almost a little under two minutes. Your third base is around four minutes. Your fourth base is around six minutes. And then here's, the, here's where it goes deeper from this. Your fifth base should be around eight minutes because eight minutes into a base that exists is around the time when your patches that are far are going to mine out. And as soon as your patches mine out, you want to send those probes somewhere new so it's not 16 probes mining eight patches worth of probes. Yeah. And then, so if, if we're talking base number one mines out at eight minutes, well, if we built a base every two minutes, that means base number two is going to mine out at 10 minutes because that's eight minutes after two. Base number three is going to mine out at 12 minutes because that's eight minutes after four. And so on and so on and so on. So you want to be expanding every two minutes up until you have literally your entire side of the map. And um, I saw you, you got all your uh, army, you know, uh, hotkey one. You know, I find myself using F2 a lot. That's, yeah, that's and for now. That's okay. Uh, if you want okay. to, if you, if here's, here's a humongous advantage for having a hotkey. If you put your army on a hotkey... Mm -hmm. And you want to micro it, which I'm not telling you to do right now. But if you did, yeah. if you double tap one one, just really like one one, really quickly on the keyboard, what happens is yeah. is you your camera shifts to the army. Yeah. So it gives you the ability to go like five five. It goes back to your nexus. One one goes back to your army. Five five goes back to your nexus. One one goes back to your army. You can shift your camera without having to click the mini map and drag your camera around. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, that'll just be super. Uh, uh, yeah, that'll just be a great way to like a good checkpoint for you to like compare yourself against. Uh, and if you can do that, seriously, you're fucking diamond. That, that this happens okay. to a lot of people where they, uh, you know, they have to overcome this obstacle, I guess, 
But that is yeah. that is your ticket to diamond right there. Okay. All right, man. I, I have one more thing to ask you. Yes. Really quickly, in Battle.net options, in bottom right, go to the menu. Wait, wait, wait. So I exit the replay? Yeah, sorry. Exit the replay. That's fine. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then in bottom right, there's like the little, it's like the, to the right side of the, at the last thing I told you to go to. It's the menu of the game. Yeah. Go to options. Yes. Go to gameplay. Or no, sorry. Go to mouse and keyboard. Mouse and keyboard. Yes. And then tell me what it says for your mouse, keyboard, and drag scroll speeds. They're the three bars at the bottom with percentages. Oh, mouse, scroll speed, 39%. Okay. What's your keyboard and drag? Keyboard 20, 20. Okay, and drag is 20 as well? Yeah. Okay, put drag to 50. Drag, scroll, speed to 50. Just try it. And if, if you don't like it, you can change it back, but try it. Okay. Now, okay. really quickly, put it at 50 and hit accept, and then really quickly, uh, just make a game for yourself. Yeah. And, dra and just literally, don't even play the game. Just take your mouse to the edge of your screen and just drag it across the screen. Okay. And tell me if that feels good. Because that is a humongous thing as well that I see a lot of people do where they play slow because they don't have camera hockeys yet and they drag their mouse around the screen so fucking slow. Yeah, I think that's my problem, yeah. <laughs> I'm starting the game right now. Let's see. It's going to feel absurdly fast probably at first, but once you get used to it, you're going to be like, holy shit, I can like cover ground so much faster. No, that feels nice. You like I it? I like it. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, it's going to definitely, like, anything above 50 is a bit excessive. Like, you're going to be like, holy fuck, I can, like, it's it's like I'm trying to. Yeah, I don't want to be missing yeah, like, where I want to. It'd be like. Control. This feels like I can control it. Yeah, anymore. it's it's just, it's a bit much. Uh, But, yeah, 50% is, like, the sweet spot where it's fast, where you can still control it. And it's much faster than what the default is set at. But it's not too fast where it feels like it's just, like, absurdly obnoxious where you don't even know what's going on. All right. All right, man. Well, I wish you the best of luck. And, uh, <laughs> dude, thanks for doing a lesson. No, I appreciate it. I'm sorry I couldn't uh, meet up before, but, you know. No, you're all good. Happened. You're all good, dude. All right, dude. All right, man. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Take it easy. Bye. All right, guys. Boom. That has been a coaching lesson with Dr. Disaster, or better known as Hyperion, the name he's super proud of. <laughs> Yo, Hyperion, much love, dude. I appreciate you doing a lesson. Uh, thank you, thank you. And, guys, everyone who watched it, Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed. Go check out more if you liked it. If you want to, if you want to learn more, there's always uh, a lot more stuff out there that you can check out and you know be a part of, and you know find discover things that help you get better at StarCraft. And just for the sake of turning on my camera at the end here, I'll turn it on. Hi, sorry, my my nose is running, so I turned it off for that whole lesson, so I didn't have to be on camera. But guys, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take it easy. Much love. See you, see you soon. And uh, yeah, good luck in your own games. Peace, guys. See you.